it's time to flow with the SEO queen. Receive the perfect leads like never before. No traffic's gonna explode. It's time to grow. Welcome to the Jazz and Tech Lounge with Lady Z, a podcast about the secrets to success in technology, music, and business. On Bashani Radio, iHeartRadio, and iTunes, Bashani Radio, always talking about everything from New York City. You can listen to the Jazz and Tech Lounge with Lady Z on any mobile phone or tablet device. The Jazz and Tech Lounge with Lady Z, where we explore tech and enjoy the music and learn the secrets to music and technological success. Please follow us online at www.lady. VHE.com and all social networks at LADYVHE. Please pull out your phones and follow me on Instagram. And today's guest is an entrepreneur, a writer, businessman. In the late 90s, he began publishing an online newsletter entitled The New York Underground while, while interning at Stress Magazine. Six months later, he had the opportunity of a lifetime um, fall into his lap. And one phone call led to a successful career in journalism that spanned nearly over a decade. He's an ed- he was an editor for The Source Magazine. And right. well, yeah. the editor for The Source Magazine needed someone who could get on the phone with Ludacris and complete the assignment. However, even with all the clout and privileges writing offered, he was not satisfied. Having studied the music industry since his teenage years, he was far from content. As the Source magazine started its downward spiral, he began, he became a contributor to the rival hip hop magazine XXL, newly launched King Magazine, Vibe, and several online portals, including all HipHop.com and Yahoo Music. In 2001, Ben Original launched his online media outlet, Urban Magazine. Though originally launched as an additional revenue source and promotion tool for the magazine through UMA Marketing and Advertising, he landed lucrative licensing and developmental deals with various major brands, including American Greeting Interactive and Def Jam. I could go on about this phenomenal writer, and man, let me tell you, I've been following him online for quite some time, and you have to check out his podcast with uh, Dakari called The Bigger Picture. He is quite uh, in tune with the music industry and just the culture in general, and I'm, I'm looking forward to introducing to some and presenting to others. Ben Original. How are you today? I'm outstanding. I love you. I love that intro. I love the, the research. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I love the opportunity to talk to people I admire, and my podcast is just an excuse for me to have a conversation, extended conversation, and be nosy, because that's what I like to do. So, <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so, thank you for accepting my invitation. I know you're so busy, so... Usually I I go back, but you mentioned online your new issue of Urban Magazine is slated to come out. And what what has happened uh, today with the well, over the last one, over the last twenty four hours we we received a DDoS attack, which I believe is motivated because we're featuring a mod Arbery on the cover. Mm-hmm. Um, of the May issue. So I, I think that there's some people out there on Facebook or on the internet, some internet weeds that, you know, that are deeply offended by, you know, oh, uh, well, yeah, over the last 24 hours, we received a DDoS attack on the Urban Magazine website mm-hmm. that we believe that is, that was um, inspired by the fact that we're featuring Ahmad Aubrey on the cover of the May issue. And uh, so, you know, that, I mean, all they did at first when I put it up the cover, the cover was really just a uh, concept cover. Uh huh. But since they, you know, since they decided to attack the site, I'm just might as well just go ahead and put it out as the official cover of the magazine now because, you know, I've lost what? I probably lost a good from five o'clock in the morning till now. 
Uh -huh. Probably lost a good eight hours. So since they attacked the site, might as well just get, just go ahead and put it out now. Right. So, right. You know. Yeah. yeah it's, been, I, it's been it's been a rough morning. It's been a, it's been a disappointing morning, but they got it back up. The site is back up now. We added some more protection to it, so we're good. Yeah, I'm I'm glad, you know, when I spoke to you, I, I'm glad that you were able to to add um to to fortify your your website cuz in, in addition to being Lady Z, I'm also the SEO queen and building websites and securing them is one of the things that I do. So, I was glad to hear that you're taking all the great necessary steps. Now, you know, when it comes to to um journalism and especially, you know, when you talk about music and culture and message music, do you think that um, it's still relevant? Like the whole like Marvin Gaye approach to music, do you think that's still relevant today? That artists need to, you know, have a mind for, you know, addressing issues of today, like you're doing with your magazine in their art. Well, I think it's important that the the art reflects the you know the lives of the people around it. So um with all of the with all the gimmicky and the gimmicky stuff that people are putting out there, I think that having organic music or social especially socially conscious music is important because that keeps the authenticity. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That 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 messaging is very powerful and it helps keeps the, you know, I, as I would say, keep the bullshit to a minimal, so you can okay. separate the two. While I, I do understand that it's the in, entertainment industry, and I do understand that people in, in listening to music are looking for escape, but at the same time, um, the authenticity of, of well, music. It's, good to, it's, it's good to have um, socially conscious music and, and things that you know without the gimmicks and stuff like that. So it's important to have both. It's important to have both. I think that, you know, with the magazine, you know, I think that other media outlets do all the gossip and all that stuff, and that's, that's cool. Give the, I'd rather give the, our readership real content. I, right. I, always say, I always say that Urban is, you know, Urban as a magazine is made for people who, who actually read. You know what I'm saying? Right. Who who want to be informed about not only music but you know what is really happening in the world. Right. You know, I, I think it's important that um, you know, I learned from when I was writing for the source, the source had a, a very a cultural section and it was always great content in the cultural section and I, I remember asking the editor at the time you know why is it such a small section? And he said that we, because you know if we just if we made the whole magazine completely conscious, nobody would want to read it. Mm. So that you, so you had to give them doses of consciousness and social responsibility, surrounded by something you know the things that appease their appetites in other ways. You know, right, right. So. so so with Urban, I just decided to focus on the consciousness part. I mean, we break artists, we break actors, we, we, we you know, a Black Hollywood shows us a lot of love. So we give a, it's, it's well-rounded. It's just, you know, you're not going to find anything about Takashi in Urban Magazine. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean, my goodness. Is, you know, this is a hit piece. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when I was like, I, I, I really, like, wasn't curious about Takashi. But I think YouTube suggested one of his videos. I watched it, the newest one. And then I started reading about him. And, I mean, he basically is, like, the manifestation of a figment of his own imagination. I mean, he, like, literally, like, willed his persona into existence, which from just, like, a mental standpoint, you know, a mindset standpoint is incredible. but you know, everything that has come with that is kind of like cringeworthy, you know? <laughs> I agree. I agree. 
at this time, we in our culture, because hip, in our culture, culture, we have to really be careful of the things that we applaud. Right. Because the messaging is very powerful. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can't applaud. I mean, I mean the objectification of women, and you know, and and the violence, and the just the, as an artist from an artist standpoint, like I'm not into all of that. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I think you know, like Takashi's whole gimmick, gimmicky. You know, it's a. You know, whether the people, you know, whether the people in the games or not realize it, that, you know, Takashi was a mockery to all that. Right. And, but because of, he, uh, because, you know, his cash flow from his record deal and, you know, his music income, mm-hmm. they were willing to, to overlook all that. For, right. Just so that he can, um, so that they can benefit financially. Right. So, you know, do I feel sympathetic for those guys that are locked up? Not really, because you, you know the boy wasn't built like that. He wasn't built to carry that burden, that, right. that, the weight of that, you know? Um, I, you know, I think he's hopefully, you know, that he's not to, to, to reap. And uh, now he's, he's in too deep. No, definitely. I, you know, I, I agree. Good money. Hey, listen, I'm not hating. The hustle is the hustle. Take everything that comes with it. You, know? you got to take everything. Um, I know recently his new address was revealed. Right. Online, and right. he had to pack up everything and move. I think it happened twice in one week. Yeah. See, tough, tough guys don't move. They don't have to. Right. <laughs> they don't have to. You know? Everybody's tough until... Everybody's tough until they get punched in the face or something. <laughs> it's a totally right. different game. Right. Um, exactly. But you know, but you know, I think that we as the culture, we have to we have to maintain some kind of integrity control over the culture. So speaking of integrity and control of culture, I read a book called uh, Culture Vultures by you know who. I don't know if you know, remember hearing about this book. Yeah, no, I know who. Yeah, I'm not gonna name no names, but uh, that's my guy. That's that's my guy. That's my guy. <laughs> that's my guy. Yeah, I I actually had the pleasure of meeting him, and well, before Corona, when we were going to the Merge Conference and all these other music industry conferences, I got to see him on the main stage talk about what he talks about. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I I feel like he's one of the most controversial figures, executives in hip hop. What are your thoughts oh, yeah. about Dame Dash? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, of course. I I interviewed Dame I think for the last year, the April issue of 2019. Uh huh. I he was a cover story. I interviewed him. Uh, that's you know, that's my guy. On uh, many levels, um, I respect. I respect Dame's fearlessness. Mm-hmm. While I do not think that um, it's his approach to industry stuff. Is it? Is it really the best way to go about that? Not necessarily. I disagree with. I disagree with his approach. I do respect his fearlessness. His that he's. A hundred percent, thousand percent, authentically himself. I do respect that. Right. Um, you know, I mean, the 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 history of it all shows who had the really the best business acumen out of <laughs> out of the two. Out of him and so, uh, out of him and Jay. You know, Jay-Z, excuse me, Jay Z. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's business acumen over uh, just. I think the biggest difference I see between the two of them is, um, well, a couple of differences. Uh, one is is more emotional than the other, and okay. and I think the other one, another one, is a little bit more ruthless than the other. 
Well, I think that game is game is in your face. Game is in your face, uh, and he's unapologetic. Uh, Jay Z is a, is a a little more strategic, strategic about it. You yeah. know, he's much more reserved. I, you know, for me, when you think about the role of emotions in business, I I get the impression that. Dame brings more of his emotions to the table than Jay Z has. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that I think they I think Dame Dame is very passionate. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. very passionate. He's a hundred percent sincere. He's very passionate about his business, about right. the things that he believes in, which right. which is great. Which is great mm -hmm. to be passionate about it. Mm -hmm. But you also but you also gotta be, you gotta be both passionate and functional. Right. And effective, and, passionate and, and effective. Right. And, and, you know, like, one would say, like, with Dame, it, did the egg come before, the, you know, did the egg come before the chicken? Dame, Dame is a rebel. Mm -hmm. He's an outsider. Um, right. One would say, now. It wasn't always he, that way, though. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. It wasn't that way. Well, the thing about the industry, guys like, guys like Earth Gotti, Guys like Dame that would that that project that kind of brashness. Mm -hmm. Um the moment that it's not lucrative to do business with you, they're not gonna do business with you. Right. You know? They mm -hmm. they, they you know, they they for for better or for worse, they would rather do business with somebody that they can sit down and talk to as opposed to somebody that they feel they have to fight with. Now you have to pick your battles. You, you know you have to pick your battles, but um, I think that in the case of guy, you know those, these guys, you know Dave Chappelle used to have that um, when keeping the real goes wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know I think those guys, you know those guys are example of what happens. It's not about keeping it real; it's about how you choose to keep it real. Yeah, and you know, it's about it's about your message, when you put it out, and how you put it out. Right. I mean, I think I think I'm, a, I'm I think I'm a, as fierce. I don't know from the outside looking in. I think I'll probably come across very straightforward and very brash. I could be brash at times, but I don't think you come across brash. I don't think I think you just come down, come across well, that's like, like down to earth and to the. Well, that's it. Well, that's because you're an executive. Well, that's because you're an executive. <laughs> that's because what? That's because you're an executive. People on the executive side, they get it. The people, you know, the, the, the people that are not involved in the industry, they might come across a little, little heavy-handed at times. But I, it's honest. You know, it's honest. Um, I think that because because I tell people when they're wrong. You know what I'm saying? I, right. I tell people when they're wrong. I tell people when they violate norms and stuff. Because as a rule in this industry, people don't always tell you when you're wrong. When you no. make a mistake, if people you... will laugh behind your back and and make fun right. of you. I, you know, I had an experience with a producer that I paid money to, and I found out that this person really had no intention of really finishing the project. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Now, see, to me, I I would put somebody like that on blast because it's a lesson for other people to learn. Hey, that's that's what we do. I mean, I I believe in accountability. I do, too. I, I do, and I, I, I fully believe, believe in it. Right. I think there's a whole lot of unnecessary nastiness in the music industry. Unnecessary. Well, I, th I think I think that I think there's very in this industry there's definitely very bad people right. who are who are who are empowered, who are empowered. You know, and um, you know I think that even in my messaging on social media and stuff like that, I. I you know, I appreciate. By the way, I appreciate all the nice things you said. That, that I really do appreciate that. Um, That's from the heart. But I think that it's also important. I think it's also important to be honest with people. I think that you know, 
rather than laugh how laugh at how somebody's bad pitch or something like that, I try to make it a teachable moment, you know. And mm-hmm. and if I can't, if they're not willing to learn the lesson, then you know, I use them as an example for other people to learn from. Right. You know, sometimes sometimes if we don't learn the lesson, we become the lesson. Right. You know. Right. So. Mm-hmm. You know, but I think that it's important that we hold each other accountable. I, I mean, certain things, certain things are clearly unacceptable. I think the industry does, but the industry does have its share of bad people. Right. Um, everybody in this game is not sweet. Everybody in this game is not going to look out for your interests. I no, mean, no. It, I, I, but, I, but I think that we as a people, because of our culture, we're a very we're a very loving people. Yeah. And I think that I think that because when we bring that into business, it, it's gonna lead to disappointment. It's gonna lead to some conflicts. Right. You know, um we can if, talk if, um Yeah, you know, I think like if Clive Davis drops somebody, Clive Davis and those guys, they could drop people all the time and it's not a big deal. But if Diddy drops somebody or JP drops somebody, mm-hmm. it becomes problematic because there's this familiarity with the artist as opposed to being strictly a business decision. And in fact, I think that if you look at JP's Rock Nation, you see that JP was what he did with Rockefeller. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Rockefeller, guys like Beanie, um, Memphis Bleak, mm-hmm. all those guys, they were family to him. Whereas the people who are part of Rock Nation, he treats them like they're artists. He treats it like it's business with them. Right. Now, he might take some personal interest in, like, Meek Mill and some others, but at the end of the day, it's still not the same camaraderie that he had with the people when he was at Rockefeller. Right. Because he realized that, you know, when guys like Beans gets mad, when Beans goes to prison or goes to jail, ample so many times and he's looking at you to keep bailing them out and all these other things yeah, that's probably because yeah right it's because you guys because under the under the familiarity of friendship right. whereas if you treat if you treat the artist like he's a straight up artist right you know I, I mean it's important i think that it's very important to maintain that integrity but yeah if you, you want to share your story with that producer i'm with it yeah, I, 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 you know, I've been going back and forth on what I was going to do about it. So, I mean, so, sometimes you just, you know, you know, sometimes you just want to educate people to how to move because this is this is like any other business. There are rules in this business. There's people, you know, these people, you know, they're out to get. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's people out here that. There's savages out here, you know. So I have a question for you. What's like the yeah. biggest scam you've come across in the music industry? Like, I've been getting these ads. I don't know if you've you've gotten these ads on Facebook lately since this whole uh, quarantine happened. But uh, coast to coast mixtapes, they want you to pay like I don't know, like three four hundred dollars to play from your house on Facebook Live to whatever audience. I mean, you know, the 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 coast to coast mixtapes. There's another guy. I won't put his name out there, but there's another guy that's out there that you know. They're all they're all dirty. I, I put like this. I advise people to do their research. Right. From coast from coast to coast mixtapes to um, some of these other similar uh, brands that do the same thing. The question that you got to ask these people is um, what are the results? Right. What are the results? Some of these guys are out here charging these artists four or $500 to, before the pandemic, four or $500 to meet A&Rs, but what are the results? You know, you, you take some kid from Columbus, Georgia, and you charge them four or five hundred dollars to come to New York to to meet success, the A and R from Atlantic Records. But what are the results? Right. 
he gets to come to New York and take a picture at the Atlantic Records lobby in front of the logo. He meets the A and R for about fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. The A and R skims through his stuff, and then he's back on the plane going back home. Yeah, he's not any more closer to a record deal than he was when he got on the plane in the first place. But just a lot of these artists don't work. They're looking for a shortcut. You know, they they they're looking for a quick fix. I get artists all the time in my inbox that's like, yo. You write at you used to write for Double XL, yo. You know, let, let, can you give me a feature? How much I got to pay you to get a feature? He's like, yo, this, you don't jump to Double XL. That's not how it works. You don't come in right. off of SoundCloud and go to Double XL and get an article. <laughs> That's crazy. You gotta put in work. A lot of, you know, it's, it's a mis, it's a misconception because a lot of these people real don't realize that just because the artist is new to you. Uh -huh. That artist has worked his entire life to get into the game. Right, so this, right. This, it, it takes years and, right. There's years and years of hard work. Just because, just because you didn't hear about this guy, you know, this, his struggle rapper, his struggle days, doesn't mean that he didn't have them. You know, right. a lot of these guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. A, a lot of these guys was like homeless and stuff. They, they, they. Tiger, for instance, Tiger was homeless, sleeping in his car. Wait, wait, wait. Tiger was homeless? He was homeless. He was born at mercy. I did not even. Wow. What was that song that, that was hitting in the summer? Couch searching for, for, yeah, couch searching. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> you know the story that I like. I, I love the story of Migos, how Migos, like, literally went to all the clubs in Atlanta. Right. With their tapes. And they, they right. be there at the beginning and shut it down and beg and beg and beg DJ to play their stuff. Right. And they finally, they finally got, you know, broke through. But, you know, I, I think, you know, what are some misconceptions that you think people have about how to make it in the music industry? Well, they, well, I think they think that they think that all it takes is talent, mm. and it's not about you know, drive is a talent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not about how dope you are; it's about how business savvy you are. Right. You now, a lot of times, a lot of times, when we see these artists that are not necessarily the most skilled or the most talented with these record deals, it's probably usually it's because these artists are putting in. A thousand times the work compared to the artists that think that just because you're nice or just because you're singing dope, you think you deserve to be right. in. Right. Right. Um, you know, even 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 when you take a jerk, a, you know, a jerk a jerk kind of guy like Takashi. Right. Think about think about the amount of content that Takashi put it out there. Think about the. I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not co-signing what he did. I'm well, just saying I, him, Cardi B, Mono Neon. Who else can these I? These people. These people, people are in, always online posting new content. Right. They put in work. Right. They put in the work. Right. Whereas a lot of people say, you know, I can sing or I can rap. I deserve it. You know, it, it's a it's a lot of entitlement out yeah, there. Yeah, that that entitlement. I mean, I think you're right. I think that that is definitely a misconception that people have. All because you can play skillfully, that does not. Well, that's the thing. I, you know, like I mean, I, on a on on a on a real level, like let's just say something like singing, singing. I could go to any black church on a Sunday. I could go to any black church on a Sunday and find somebody that is visibly marketable that can sing. Right. But can you show up to the studio on time? Yeah. Can 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 you can you navigate your personal relationship and and and, and keep your keep your man out 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 of your business? Right. Can you handle your business without your man slowing you down? That that's a or that's without one. compromising yourself. Right. I've seen all these things. Yeah. Oh man. 
I could tell you, I could like, tell you so help. many times. Yeah, I could tell you so many artists, especially uh, female artists, especially mm-hmm. because women tend to be um, more. They tend to be more willing to sacrifice things to maintain the relationship. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, uh, but I can tell you, I know a lot of dope singers that, you know, they made some terrible choices because of relationships and stuff like that. So like, I don't want to say the names, but <coughs> Nivea. Yeah, I mean, she's <laughs> basically, I don't know how come my sister couldn't got a, a nanny or something. But, I mean, you know, it's one of those things where you know you, what I what I used to tell artists is this. You know, love is a beautiful thing. Love is a beautiful thing. Right. And if you choose to sacrifice your career in love for love, I mean, there's nothing. Love is something that I consider worth the sacrifice if it is love. Right. If it is love. Right. But. But love doesn't require you to make those kind of real love doesn't require you to make those kind of compromises. Right. You know, but yet, you know, there's plenty of examples of people who have who have taken themselves out of the game. Um, you know, I, I think I think again, that's why I said that it takes more than talent. Right. It takes wow. way more than talent. You gotta put in the work. You gotta be willing to you know, uh, I, I always tell my son that the guy, the guy you see flipping fries at McDonald's, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that wasn't his aspiration in life. Right, right, right. That makes but a lot of sense. Right, but somewhere along the way, he made choices and he made compromises, and that's why he's flipping the fries. Not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but there is something wrong with that if you aspire to be more. Right, right. You know, happy with that there's more power to you but if you're not happy with that you know that that a lot of people think that they're entitled they forget that there's you know there's a whole bunch of people trying to get into the industry right there's a whole bunch of people who can sing there's a whole bunch of people who can rap right Man, i i could go outside and throw a rock and i might hit a rapper <laughs> you know what I'm saying? right and you know the the hip-hop is the biggest most lucrative genre of music right now. It's, it's selling right. most. I mean, this is right. almost a $20 billion industry, the music industry, and hip hop is definitely the king of the music industry. And so, you know, there's a lot of people vying for attention, but I think just like any type of business, whether it's a product or a service, it's, you really have to figure out what your niche is, what your message is, and and address that know who your ideal customer is and give them what they what resonates right but you have to you have to be able to you have to be able to be comfortable in your own skin right 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 i mean i this is just my belief i believe that if you believe truly believe who you are and you are and you are at peace with your your personal uniqueness Mhm, mhm. That sets you apart right there. Just being who you are sets you apart from other people, right? And that 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 creates your own lane. But uh, you know, so many people are you know, so many people don't really understand marketing. They don't understand how it works. You know, there's room for there's only room for two major brands in any category. Mm-hmm. You know, you got Beyonce and you got Rihanna. Now they're gonna dominate the market, and if you if you try to be like them, you may catch five or ten percent, but that's it. Yeah, you got to be yourself. Right, you gotta you gotta be able to set yourself apart so that the people who rock with you, you know, I, I think that I've done that pretty well with Urban. Urban, I got my own base, I got my own support. <laughs> nope, you know. I, and I'm good with that. Right. I'm good right. with that. You know, I, I, if the if the labels choose to support Urban, that's cool. But I'm not I'm not looking for their financial support because I don't want to be under their thumb. I don't want to be controlled by them. Right. I don't want. You want to have an editorial. 
prerogative. Right, right. I, I don't want. I don't want. I love the people at Atlantic. I do, but I don't. I don't want them telling me that I gotta put uh, uh, somebody like Takashi on the cover of Urban, or they're pulling their ass. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't. Yeah. No. You know, I I, I want to keep my. I want to keep. I want to do good enough to pay. You know, take care of my bills and take care of my people. Right. Yeah. You know. So yeah, I, 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 I think. I think the thing that is so like um, cringeworthy about Takashi is that he appeals to the baser instincts of humanity. I mean, it's 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 about really you know drug, sex, rock and roll, that whole like. And it's, but that that's because it's easy. Yeah, it's it's easy and. I mean, it's like, wow. So I want to know from you, like, for an independent artist who's listening to this episode of the Jazz and Tech Lounge, what would you, what advice or encouragement would you give them in, you know, taking their career to the next level? Well, I think, I think they have to really come to terms with why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. If you're doing this because you're an artist, um, then... I think that you should do it because you love what you're doing. If, right. you, if you're doing this as as a as a as a way to just you know come up, then it, I you know me personally, I don't really want to support that kind of artist. Right. Um, you know, I don't I don't really want to um, I don't really want to rock with that kind of artist I, because it's not it's not it's that's not real to me. Um, Back in the eighties, when breakdancing was was a big thing, right? It, it, it was a big thing. Guys like Crazy Legs from um, what's in, Rocksteady Crew uh-huh. out of New York City, uh-huh. you know, um, those guys were breaking. You know, breakdancing it was a big. It was a big thing, and right. then it went away. And then um, you got served came out, and then the breakdancing came back out again. And right. I remember seeing. Rock study. I remember seeing Crazy Lake speak at a rock study event at Grand Central, and uh-huh. he was like, "If you're a break dancer, you didn't stop break dancing just because it wasn't trendy anymore." Right, right. If you're a break dancer, you kept you you did it because you loved it for the love of it. Yeah, absolutely for the love of it. And I think that to really be successful, and success is how you find it. Yeah. But I think to be successful in a real, genuine way. You got to do this stuff because you love it. You got to do it because, you know, um, because it's who you are. And I think that you got to really have that honest conversation with yourself as to what you're doing. And I love the entertainment industry. I I love it. I would do it. If I was a millionaire, I would still do it because I love it. I love hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I've loved hip hop since I had. I'm right there with you. I mean, I I love hip hop since I had heard rappers delight when I was in the third Oh my grade. god, that's <laughs> the bomb record. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I I, I love hip hop when it wasn't on radio. I love hip hop. I love hip hop from the beginning. I, you know, I I lived it throughout my whole life. I mean, I th- I think I think hip hop. When you talk about, you know, next month is Black Music Month, and when you talk about hip hop, jazz. R and B, gospel, rock and roll. This is all black music. Right. You have to you it's have to our love heritage. It. Right. You have to love it. And if you don't love it, you know, I, I think that you just really because if you love it, then you will make the sacrifices that you need to make for it. Right. You know, a lot of these artists they say they oh I want it. I want I want I wanna um so I want to, I want to, I want to go hard, but mm-hmm. you want to wear Jordans. You ain't got money to hire a marketeer, but you got money for Jordans. You get, you don't, you don't have right. money, right. you don't, right. you don't have money to invest in and in hire a publicist, but you're flying, you're going out to Jamaica, you're going on cruises and stuff. Right. You don't really want it. You just right. want to act like you want it. Right. It's a hobby, and and to me. You know, that's why you don't win because it's a hobby. Mm-hmm. You're not going hard. Now, you know, 
when I wanted to write for the magazine and stuff, if 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 I only had enough money to get back and forth to to uh to Queens to from Poughkeepsie to Queens, if I only had enough money to buy a beef patty and a sprite, uh -huh. I was on that train. <laughs> I love a beef patty. Yeah, cocoa oh, bread. A beef patty and a spray. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. I don't drink I wanted it anymore, but when I did drink soda, Sprite was good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I I went hard with it. That's why that's why I'm a I'm a I'm very much unsympathetic when it comes to that because I know what it's like to want to do something and have to make the sacrifices. You know, I you know I always tell people like with with even when it comes to relationships. You know, Urban Magazine is undefeated. Urban Magazine is undefeated in my life as far as my priority. Right. You know? You, yeah, you, you know, if anything that comes... Right. You said, a, you said a lot. I think, you know, yeah. we have a culture of relationships. You know, I grew up, you know, my parents are still married. And watching them pursue their careers and what they wanted to do... I, I see them pursuing their passion. I see right. them pursuing, and they don't they they don't demand each other to make these big sacrifices. I don't know why um, there's so much insecurity and this demand. I think you know I'm on the same page with you. You know, well, I ca I cannot in any relationship I am in. I'm not gonna let my business take a second seat to it because right. I mean, you, you know, I you and let me always fight ill. Yeah, you know, I say I always say that you know, even even when even when they have, you know, even when it's like you know they have the six figure, the women with the six figure salaries. <laughs> uh -huh. Listen, when you have to love me and when it comes down to, it. but I think there's a, I think there's a big misconception when it comes to relationships anyway because right. um you know like let's say you take two spheres one spirit is, is 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 the person that you're dating the oh. other spirit is yourself right now where those two spirits intersect that's y'all that's us that's we that's that's where we exist. right right but you should not have to forfeit all the things that you are to be in a relationship there's you there's me, and there's this where we come together. That's us. Right. But you should still be allowed to be you, and I should still be allowed to be me. Exactly. And now, over time, that intersectionality is going to expand. You know, hopefully, it hopefully. expands. Hopefully. And, yeah. But but it, it expands in a respectful way where we all respect right. we respect each other's boundaries. Right. And and we and we make that choice together to right those comments. Right. Right, you know, look at look at Stedman and look at Oprah. Right. Stedman is content with that intersectionality. He's not trying to run Oprah. He's not. He's good. He's good where he's at. Well, I think if he tried to run Oprah, she'd be like, "Bye." Yeah, I mean, Oprah could always find somebody that would share that spirit with her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, but that's what important right 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 i think that it's important that you know mm -hmm. i i i warned with you know i let them know women i warned them i like yo listen when you're living your purpose when you're living your dream and you're 100 percent dedicated there's there's that's attractive that's that's okay. attractive and you're going to get a lot of attention from that right but the hard but the hard part is Maintaining your focus on what got you the attention in the first place. Right, right. You know, saying when, like, when, um, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, as a woman, I'm sure that you you have girlfriends and stuff. You know how people get funny when they get a little new something in their life. Oh, yeah, do I know? <laughs> and, I, and I and I tell them about it. I'm not gonna name no names, but yeah, I do yeah. It, and when it happens. Yeah, it, it 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 happens. It happens, and you and you're like, you know, I like I, you see you see the post because you know women say, hey, I'm living my best life, I'm happy, I'm doing my thing. Then all of a sudden, this guy shows up, and then it's, well, well, guess what happens? 
when you're successful and you're and you're focused, uh huh, you choose to allow that guy to come in and distract you like that. You choose to make those compromises that you don't even have to make because you lose yourself in that process. It's important. Right. If there was one thing that I would want the artist listening to this to, to this podcast to understand is that you got to maintain your focus. You got to maintain your identity. You got to maintain your dedication because guess what? You can get a new man. You can get a new man. You can get a new woman. But your dreams, you only got a window. You only got a small window of time. You know the the you know. You only got a small window of time um, for mainstream success, for mainstream right. success. The, right. eyes, the, the eyes of you being successful as an artist kind of diminish as you get older in this game. Right. You know, they, there's no new 40-year-old rappers. <laughs> there's, there's, you know, by the time you reach 40, you better have at least a gold record or something. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm just saying that you got to stay focused and you got to, you got to, my advice to the artist is you got to be focused on who you are because mm -hmm. all that other stuff comes, that stuff is going to come, you know? All right. So we have, I've been enjoying this conversation. So May is mental health awareness month. What are your thoughts about mental health in the music? Industry? I think, I think that it's very important mm -hmm. to, I think self-care is very important. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it's, it's important that we approach life and prioritize self-love and right. self-care. Yeah. You know, um, I think a lot of people are out here looking for help. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not looking for love, they're looking for help. Right, right, right. And, and I think that you should, before you, before you can be whole, before you can be part a partner with someone else, mm -hmm. you need to be whole within yourself. Right. You know, you need to prioritize that. I think mental health care, mental health is important. It's understated in the black community. Right, right, right. You know, a, a lot of us, a lot of us, um, a lot of us are redistributing pain. Mm. You know, a lot of us are bringing toxic things that um, we experience in and inflicting that toxicity on others, mm -hmm. um, I think I think it's important. I, I think it's a priority. It should be a right. priority. Right. Um, Absolutely. You know, fortunately, I, you know, my sister has a, a master's degree in psychology. Uh -huh. So you know, she, you know, I get I get that free. I get that free. Oh, you have fee. family shrink, so you could call her up and be like, "Sis, help yeah, with I, I got it." You, I mean, I mean, if she's gonna psychoanalyze me anyway, <laughs> right, right. Might as well just hear it, hear it from her, right? Right. I might as well call the kick box with me. <laughs> right. I'm, I, since she's gonna tell me how she feels anyway, I might as well just call her <laughs> and get that. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I think, I think, I think it's important. I think it's important because no one, where you can't, you can't be successful in this business alone. Right, right. There's no islands out here. Everybody, you know, everybody has been. Um, you have to work. You have to work with other people. You know, Diddy. Diddy was helped with on, by Andre Harrell. Andre Harrell was put on by Russell Simmons. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Right. There's, there's, there's oh, connections connection. out here where people. You know, I, I I've been taking care of. Right, I've been taking care of you, looked out for you know. Uh, I think that it's important, but but uh, you know, it's important that we take care of ourselves as well, right? To make sure that we're whole because this game is ugly. This game yeah, it is, is, it is, ugly. and and you know what? I, you know, I like I shared before, you know, the dealing managing disappointment is it's like you know. I talk to my dad and, you know, when, when I get ripped off but X amount of dollars and then my dad comes back to me, he's like, if I would have got back every single loan I gave out and people didn't and would have paid me back, that's over, you know, X amount. And I'm, you know, that's perspective. It could be worse, you know, oh, no. worse. 
and dwelling on that disappointment, you got to just, you know, you got to bounce back. You got to just keep moving forward. And that's what I'm doing is moving forward. Well, you know, the the thing that I've learned, the thing I've learned to accept, you know, in my, in my, you know, later years is that you, people in this, people in life, mm -hmm. if you're useful, people are going to try to use you because you're useful. Right. If, if people don't try to use you because you're useless. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? So right. you got to expect, you know, what I always tell, what I always tell my clients and stuff is that you got to take the sugar with the shit. You, you got to. You got to take you gotta keep the sugar with the shit. <laughs> well, speak, speaking of uh, sugar, honey, iced tea, how can oh, people, how can people contact you? How can they, you know, find you and Urban Magazine online? I'm on I'm on social media. I'm all over social media. I've been original at Twitter, Instagram, Urban Magazine, one word, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'm I'm a little bit on Snapchat. My Snapchat team is not really strong. You know what I'm saying? Don't expect a lot of posts. <laughs> no way. I, but, I don't know what it is about Snapchat, but I I just couldn't get into it. Well, it's creepy. It's a, it's a creepy space. <laughs> Snapchat is for creeps. <laughs> wow. I I just and and I want to get on TikTok, but I'm so busy with clients. I don't my, son, my son as much, but my son told me that I can't. Get, my son told me I can't get on TikTok. Oh, that's what your son said. Yeah, yeah. My son told me he said I'm too old. He said don't. Be. He said it's better enough that he got his share Instagram space and all this other stuff with me. Okay, <laughs> he told me not to get on TikTok. You know, my yeah, son has a thing when I show some some mommy joy. If I get excited, start dancing or singing, he's like, nah. Yeah, that's what my son does. My son said, he said, he's like, Dad, you're not allowed to do the Millie Rock. Don't be, don't be out here trying to do the Millie Rock. <laughs> he's like, he's like, two steps, two steps. That's it. That's all. They, they don't know. They don't understand. You say more than that, you're doing too much, Dad. Listen, we were cool before. We were cool before they were born. That's how they got here. Pretty much. Yeah. That part. Right. That part. I was like, I was like yo, you, you wouldn't even know none of this stuff if it wasn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it was my pleasure to be chatting with you. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate so it much. so much. Yeah, and um, I'm definitely gonna holler at you about that uh, that feature. Few features. All right. I want to. I yeah. want to get with you about my music. You know, this All podcast right. gets over a million downloads and streams a month. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, this this podcast is is, is very it's highly listened to. And thank you, shout out to all my listeners. I appreciate you. But thank you again for having me. I appreciate it so much. All right, thanks again. <laughs>